You are, you are royally dressed today. This is a special occasion for you. Yes, it is a special occasion. It is to be remembered because I do not think we will ever see again a royal member serve over seven decades and to do so through tumultuous times, through peaceful times, but with such dignity, grace, charm, and courage. And all of that helped to keep a commonwealth of nations um, on every continent of the world intact. She was a source of inspiration to many. And for me, it was truly a privilege to serve as First Minister in the constitutional government of the Bahamas. Did you meet her face to face? Yes. How um, many times? On a number of occasions, okay. because she, in my early days, what happens is that when you win an election and you go to Chogum, the Commonwealth Conference of Ministers and Prime Ministers, and the Queen would invite you to dinner. So for any incoming Prime Minister after a general election, once the Queen was in attendance of Chogum, um, you would have the privilege of having dinner with her together with any other Prime Minister who won an election subsequent to the last Chogum. So yes, um, we've had that opportunity. But the most important thing for me is that whether as a student in the United Kingdom, as someone working in a solicitor's firm in the United Kingdom, as someone in public life in the Bahamas, as someone who became Prime Minister, it was it was a privilege to watch this lady um, in her magnificent okay, tour of duty as Queen of the Commonwealth. That's right. You studied in London, did you? Yes. Okay. So, you know, it was therefore for me truly a long term and time watching her, seeing her, observing her. And quite frankly, it, it speaks for itself to serve for 70 years. It's such, uh, such magnificence that you have to sit and sort of wonder, can this ever happen again? Never. You look great, sir, if I may say so. My friend, thank you very much. God is good. Yes, sir. Former Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Perry Gladstone Christie, after having signed the book of condolences, you want me to take a break? I want to read. I, can I read what Mr. Christie said? Sure. Okay. Yes. Um, Mr. Christie said, it was a pleasure serving her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as her first minister in the constitutional government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Her grace, dignity, courage, and powerful example proved to be a major force in keeping the Commonwealth of Nations intact. And now, Break. Okay, we're going to take a break now. This is the occasion of the Queen is dead. Long live the King. We'll be back. Hey guys, it's that time of year again, the Atlantic hurricane season. Are you ready? Here's another Zetnas hurricane readiness tip to help you prepare. Where should you start getting things on the outside of your home prepared for a storm? Here's some good advice from Antonio Miller about just where to begin. I think one of the first things you should do to secure your yard while a hurricane is approaching is to 
take a, a five, 10 minutes and walk around your property and make sure that for the most part, anything that you can lift, you have anchored down or move out of the way. That's one of the first steps. Now that you know how to start your preparations, here are some important things you need to remember to do because a lot of people leave them until the last moment or forget them completely. One of the things most people forget to do or do very late is secure their vehicles. Um, and you may be like, how do I secure my vehicles? Well, you want to make sure that you are parked in an area that, if, for example, this is prone for flooding, you want to move the vehicle out of that area that's prone for flooding. Um, also, pets, you want to make sure that if you have outdoor pets, if you have dogs that are inside dog houses or tied, you want to make sure that during the storm, you really want them inside or, you know, secure a space for them inside. Another thing a lot of people forget to do until it's the very, very last minute, I think, is always, you know, securing the windows. I think that's one of the last things we see um, to do when it's imminent danger, securing the windows of a home. This has been another Zedness Hurricane readiness tip to prepare you for the storm. I've never seen people in Abu go so shocked. It's a bittersweet moment as they pick up the pieces of what's left after Hurricane Dorian devastated their lives three years ago. What if you don't look like somebody had dropped a bomb here? Although the memories can never be erased. I couldn't call my family. I called her family. You can still hear the pain in their voices. Have I here bang too hard? It just, you know? Anybody who could get inside go ahead inside. And through it all, this community of Abaco remains grateful. Our family was. Join ZNS TV 13 for Voices of the Storm on Sunday, September 11th at 8 p.m. as survivors relive their dramatic stories of living through the storm and we learn how the government has focused its attention on listening to their voices and helping these hurricane victims get their lives back. That's Voices of the Storm, right here on TV 13. Welcome back to the ZNS radio and television continuing coverage of the signing of the Book of Condolences here in Parliament Square, the Senate building, as we say, the Queen is dead. Long live the King. Queen Elizabeth II, Her Majesty, passed yesterday. There was a smooth transition to King Charles III. Here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, we are witnessing members of parliament, members of our judiciary, spouses of former prime ministers, heads of diplomatic missions and heads of international organizations, parliamentary secretaries, chief justices, 
chairman of commissions established under the Constitution, they are all coming to sign the book of condolences here in the Senate building downtown Nassau. A justice of the Supreme Court is now here. Good morning. We are so pleased to have this opportunity to be here. We did not wish for this opportunity to pass. The Queen has been sitting on the throne for 70 years, so more than a generation. And now King Charles III takes the throne. seeing the signing of the book of condolences moving a little faster than earlier. We will see later on, I believe, the Commissioner of Police and the Commodore of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. These are justices of the Supreme Court now and Court of Appeal. I said earlier, no matter how busy you were today, you had to take time out to sign the book of condolences here in Parliament Square. It was Perry Christie who said that Her Majesty reigned through turbulent times and through peaceful times. And was a, uh, I, I think Dr. Minnis said she was a peacemaker. And so, every country in the world recognizes this day and yesterday. And doing so in great memory, the longest serving monarch in the history of the world. briefly before he departs, sir? No. Um, justices tend to be very private in their utterings, and it is understandable. Um, the president of the Court of Appeals spoke to us. Um, but normally justices do not speak publicly about things. Their ruling is their ruling. And we, we, we kind of 
inherit that from the United Kingdom. In fact, you never see justices hanging out anywhere, do you? No, they don't. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so, a very um, special occasion. Good morning. You know, the constitutional mechanisms that have made this country outstanding directly inherited from the United Kingdom and we are so pleased to have good morning to have a peaceful tranquil transition in changes that occur in the Bahamas. It is indeed a privilege, particularly as we witness such a transition from the Queen to her son, from Her Majesty to His Majesty, from Elizabeth II to Charles III. I think it was the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram who indicated that there are going to be changes. And we suspect that some of the changes will be cumbersome. I think the national anthems may have to be rewritten. Because the, the vows and the pledges say, God save the Queen. Now we have to say, God save the King. Hi. Parliament Square here in the city of Nassau where persons of all walks of life have come to sign the book of condolences and I say all walks of life because on the outside I would see Mrs. Murray a teacher who came here from Barbados many years ago, she wants to sign as well. Um, so yes, the heads of state, heads of government, heads of the judiciary, heads of the, the church are signing, but others want to sign as well. Just like how they're doing in London right now, the Queen's body is still in Balmoral, but prisons are queued up outside Buckingham and Westminster to show their sadness, to show their empathy, and to let the royal family know that the Queen, Her Majesty Elizabeth II, was well loved. to justices and members of our judiciary.
quiet, quietly, members, heads of various denominations are coming to sign this book as well. to reflect on some of the messages that have been sent to the royal family from the Bahamas. example, statements were read throughout yesterday is what former Prime Minister Perry Christie had to say. I am deeply saddened by the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. It truly is the end of an era, a most magnificent era, not only for the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth, and our own Bahamas, but for the entire world. It's Perry Christie speaking for himself. Personally, he said it was a pleasure to have been afforded the opportunity to serve non-consecutive terms as First Minister of Her Majesty's constitutional government here in the Bahamas. is not a by the way, this is very important. Flags are flying at half staff today. All day until evening when they ought to be lowered. Half mast now And I imagine upon interment, that'll be another time whenever interment for Her Majesty is announced. That's right, there is a period of mourning. In fact, here's what the Prime Minister said. It is with deep regret and sadness that we learned of the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. On behalf of the government and people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, we offer our sincere condolences to the members of the royal family. This is Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis. I have ordered 
that the national flag be lowered today to half staff and to be lowered again when the official mourning period comes into effect. I believe that mourning period may be at least a week. The statement from the Governor General says, on behalf of the government and people of the Bahamas, his Excellency, the Most Honorable Sir Cornelius Smith expresses deep sadness on learning of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. In expressing his sadness, His Excellency recalls Her Majesty's several visits to the Bahamas, at which time she was joyfully received by our people. His Excellency invites all Bahamians to join in prayer for the repose of the soul of Her Majesty and for the bereaved members of the royal family. If I may add to that, not just all Bahamians, all peoples of the world. The Free National Movement's Member of Parliament for St. Barnabas, Shannon Don Cartwright, is now entering to sign the Book of Condolences. And as I indicated earlier, no matter how busy you had planned to be today, <coughs> this signing is a priority, is a necessity. It's an order that you sign this book today. So not only politicians, not only um, members of the judiciary, not only leaders of our various denominations, but others are coming as well. Mr. Cartwright, may I have a few words with you, please? Um, tell me, how does this feel now, this camera is here, how do, how, how do you feel on this occasion, sir? Well, I think it's a very uh, uh, somber time. Um, I think for most of us, um, particularly uh, those who would have had the opportunity over the reign, um, during the tenure and reign of, uh, of Queen Elizabeth, um, there are so many different memories I can remember as a Boy Scout uh -huh. being on Prince George Wharf, uh -huh. waiting for the Royal Yacht Britannia to pull up. And so, in What the, year was that? This would have been 83. Six, okay. Yeah, in 83. And so, uh, indeed, this is something. She and Prince Philip? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I was a very little boy. And I'm sure um, Bahamians from all walks of life can tell a story on how uh, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and its development has run parallel with uh, the tenure of Queen Elizabeth and indeed the, uh, the role of the uh, monarchy in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. What did you write in that book? Well, I offered my sincere condolences and prayers and, um, and an 
acknowledgement of um, her service. Um, and I think that we all can uh, relate to the level of service that we all would like to give our country and, uh, and give our people. And indeed, what uh, Queen Elizabeth has given her country and the Commonwealth um, is something that we should know and something to be proud of. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All the best to you. Thank you. Okay, the Free National Movement's member of Parliament for St. Barnabas, the Honorable Shannon Dawn Cartwright. Others are coming. Can we take a brief break? Okay, um, we will take a brief break. This is Daryl Miller live in Parliament Square. The occasion is the signing of the Book of Condolences. The Queen is dead. Long live the King. I'm Suzanne Mills, I'm a writer and a journalist, and I live in Bingo Martin, Trinidad and Tobago. I think the best way for me to describe depression is to read to you from a poem I wrote in, sem in September 2015. Bleeding nail scratch stone, scroll moss and brick, one inch up, ten feet down, down the water well. Itsy bitsy spider, insy wincing me, letting go, point there's none to holding on, plunging down, feet, torso, neck, head, welcome death, life is drowning me. I don't know if I felt suicidal, but what I do know is that I thought that there was absolutely no point to life or living. I called out, I reached out to my cousin who also has bipolar like I do. And she said, Suzanne, get a new doctor. You need new meds. The next day I had a new doctor and she put me on new meds. In about a month's time, I started to feel better, to feel sort of like I used to, at least to feel like a person for a want of a better expression. And I was getting out of bed, you know, not feeling as if the world was going to devour this insy bitsy spider. I wasn't wincing anymore. So I guess what I want to say is there's always hope. There's always a point of, of it all. There's always a tomorrow. Depression? Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Really, each team member must do his or her part in the race. If one member drops the baton, it impacts all of us. Across all ages, genders, abilities, nationalities, cultures, or religion, we are all on the same team. And we all have a role to play in getting to the finish line to win the race against COVID-19. Don't drop the baton on safety. Wear your mask over your mouth and nose. Keep at least three feet distance from others. Do not touch your face. And wash or sanitize your hands often. Together, we will win. Assessing whether or not you have a medical emergency is sometimes difficult in a crisis and could quite literally mean the difference between life and death. However, 
you should only access services at the emergency department if you're presenting with serious or life-threatening conditions. Here's a list of symptoms that require you to seek care at the emergency department. Chest pain, severe shortness of breath, numbness, tingling, and weakness, trauma with the possibility of fracture or internal bleeding, heavy bleeding, serious burns, unusual or severe headaches, poison or overdose, seizures, thoughts of suicide, severe pain to the body, severe allergic reactions, and loss of consciousness. If you feel that you or a loved one are experiencing a life-threatening medical emergency and that the condition will worsen on the way to the hospital, then call 919 and an emergency medical services provider will be dispatched to you. It is important to pay attention to the symptoms that indicate an emergency. It is also important to have a primary care physician who monitors your health. In a non-emergency situation, you should call or schedule a visit with your primary care physician or visit a clinic to be seen by a doctor. Remember, the best person to manage your health is you. I've never seen people in Abago so shocked. It's a bittersweet moment as they pick up the pieces of what's left after Hurricane Dorian devastated their lives three years ago. Well, every time it looked like somebody had dropped a bomb here. Although the memories can never be erased. I couldn't call my family. I called her family. You can still hear the pain in their voices. Am I here buying too hard? It just, you know? Anybody who could get inside, go out inside. And through it all, this community of Abaco remains grateful. My family was. Join ZNS TV 13 for Voices of the Storm on Sunday, September 11th at 8 p.m. As survivors relive their dramatic stories of living through the storm, and we learn how the government has focused its attention on listening to their voices and helping these hurricane victims get their lives back. That's Voices of the Storm, right here on TV 13. radio and television continuing coverage of the signing of the Book of Condolences here in Parliament Square on the occasion of the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen is dead. Long live the King. In my background is a statue of Victoria, Queen Victoria, who would have been Queen Elizabeth II's great-great-grandmother. It's kind of like a royal lineage. And what happens is they kind of marry within the royal family. I want to talk to this gentleman here um, I forgot your name already. Mansour Ashakor. Mansour Ashakor, who is visiting Nassau from where? The nation's capital, Washington, D.C. You came on a cruise ship. Carnival Freedom Cruise Ship. Does the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth mean anything to you? Yes, it does. It affects all of us very deeply. She was a very respected, honored woman, and we hold her spirits up high. You know, don't let, don't everybody get down about it, you know? Keep your spirits up. One of the things mentioned about her was that she was extremely 
close and recognizing of the United States of America. Yes, that is correct, sir. Uh, whether it be Obama or, or Trump or, 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 or Biden. Biden. Yes, sir. That is yeah. correct. Yes, we, yeah. we, we really uh, miss her and hope that her, uh, her royalty and the legacy of her existence carry on throughout the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. We all feel sad about this. And like you mentioned earlier, long live the king. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. And what was your name, sir? I didn't catch that. Daryl Miller Live. And, and, and yours again? Mansoor Ashakor from Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. And by the way, September the 9th is my birthday, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Happy birthday. And your first lady? My queen. Please. This is Dorka Ashakor, my wife. Nice to meet you. How are you enjoying your cruise I'm to... the cruise. Yeah. The cruise this I'm is loving. somewhat of a sad day for us, though. Yes, it is. A very sad day, yes. Very sad. Mm -hmm. I admire the queen. I love her whole family, even though I've never met the family. But just seeing her on television, because I've never been to England. But um, it is a sad day. I keep, every time I see her face, <laughs> it just... It just saddens me that she's gone. But long live the king. Yes. yes. Thank you very, very much. Yes. Enjoy your day yes. in Nassau. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. taking the time out. Uh, ZNS News, and we'll continue to come back and support you guys. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very, very much. Again, it's a, a kind of melancholy and sad as we pay tribute and signed the book of condolences for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who passed yesterday afternoon. Every country, the United States, Barbados, China, Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, Canada, Australia, they are members of the Commonwealth. And so a third of the nations, a third of the world's population directly impacted and then some indirectly impacted by this. Sir, would you, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Well, come, come and talk to us. Um, you seem to have a British accent. No, it's kind of blended. I've uh, lived a number of places, so it's, I've got a blended accent. I'm originally from Tennessee, and if you heard my original accent, it would not sound British. Mm -hmm. Have you visited um, Commonwealth countries other than the Bahamas? Yes, several. Uh, Australia, Australia, maybe? Australia, Bermuda, England. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of Australia? Oh, I enjoyed it a lot. I love that country. Really nice people, some good wine. Yeah. Uh, it's a really... If, if I were kicked out of the United States, that would be on the top of the list, I think, of places to go, right after Bahamas. In Australia, the Queen, the King, means a lot. Yes. Yes. Uh, the uh, Prince William, I believe, did a visit when we were there, and everybody turned out for that visit. It was uh, pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. so, so I enjoyed our time there immensely. Thank you very much. You came on a cruise? Yes, I'm off the uh, uh, Royal Caribbean cruise ship that's here in the harbor, Mariner of the Seas. Uh, and I'll pass on the same condolences that the gentleman ahead of me did uh, for passing of the Queen. She, uh, as an outsider in the U.S., she appeared to rule uh, as a monarch with great integrity and without all the partisanship that we see on the news in the United States. So very impressive. I admire her ability to kind of stay above the, uh, the fray of daily politics. So, that's all. Thank you very, very much. Yes, sir. Take care. Yes. I believe that uh, at some point in time, um, everyone will pay tribute. If they could sign the book of condolences, they would. I noticed um, earlier... Uh, teacher in the Bahamas who was born in Barbados 
she is here and waiting for her opportunity to sign the book of condolences. We are on the outside of um, the Senate building. The signing of the book of condolences continues. It will continue until about maybe two o'clock this afternoon. Um, all members of Parliament, be they members of the House of Assembly or members of the Senate, will come and sign. Also, various heads of constitutionally appointed commissions will come and sign as well. In addition to leaders of the various denominations um, will sign. We have seen most of the justices of the Supreme Court and also the Court of Appeal. They have signed already um, three former prime ministers beginning with the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram and Hubert Minnis and Perry Christie. They have all signed the book of condolences earlier. Here on the outside, um, not too much activity other than the visitors who are here from aboard must be three or four cruise ships and they are taking their strolls. Um, hi, may I talk to you for a moment? We are here because of the passing of Her Majesty oh, yes. the Queen yes. and books of condolences are being signed. I cannot help but notice it says Canada. Where? <laughs> you yes. are from Canada. We are. We are indeed. So you know... We know the Queen. The Queen very well. She came to our house the other day. She was there for dinner. Ah. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a sad thing. Yeah. So, yeah. but, uh, you know, I hope uh, Prince Charles, now King Charles, continues on and uh, does a good job. Mm -hmm. So, other than that? Have you had the opportunity to visit England? Yes, we were there probably... Come come into this shot, She's please. not going to come. <laughs> we were probably there about 30 years ago. Uh-huh. So, uh, we went to the castles, and it was very interesting. Did sure. you see the Big Ben? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yes, we what did. What time was it? Ah, uh, who knows. <laughs> time to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... I think London is just so historic and it is and, and cosmopolitan it is and, like toronto all inclusive like toronto uh okay yes. okay toronto canada is the same yeah the melting pot right so mm -hmm. so it's very nice how long is your visit to the bahamas well about 6 30 we should be out of here tonight okay. we're on a ship all right so. all the best all to the you. best thank you very much okay. take care and thanks for all right thank you bye-bye we uh Live. Hey, how, are you doing? how are you? I'm great. You brought the first Bahamian Defense Force boat from England? Yes, sir. I did. Whoa, tell H me that story. HMBS Marlin and Flamingo. I sailed them from England to the Bahamas in 1978. Wow. I went to school in England for six months in Southampton, in Portsmouth. Yeah, Paul's Grove. I did international warfare. And those boats were built in England. And we went over there to train to most of the naval establishment in Southampton. And we sailed from England to the Bahamas. Of course, did, you know, did you get an opportunity to meet the Queen? I <clears throat> went to Queen in 19... September 1977, mm -hmm. the Queen named HMBS Royal, Royal Bahamas Defense Force, and I was on a guard while she visited HMBS Carl Harbor Base in 1977. In 77, right. the Queen visited 
the Defense Force Base. Right, in Coral Harbor. And she made the Royal Bahamas Defense Force Royal. It was the Bahamas Defense Force. After she came, she made it the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. We had an honor guard for her. I was a part of the honor guard. She has passed. Oh, yes, very sad to know that she passed. The world will miss her present, but may her soul rest in peace. Long live the king. The queen is gone. Neville, right? That's right. Moss, right? Yeah, that's right. Crooked Island, right? Indeed. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Long life to you, sir. Thank you very much, darling. Nice to have you back on the radio and TV network. You're doing an excellent job. Continue to propel yourself and be at your best. Have a good day. Thank you very much. It's Neville Moss, who brought the first two defense force boats all of, that must have been a long ride all the way from england to the bahamas we are going to take this break go back on the inside for the continuation of the signing of the book of condolences the queen is dead long live the king Hey guys, it's that time of year again, the Atlantic hurricane season. Are you ready? Here's another Zedness hurricane readiness tip to help you prepare. When preparing the outside of your home for a storm, you mustn't forget your gutters. Antonio Miller will tell us why gutters are important to include in your hurricane preparations. The reason why gutter maintenance is important while preparing for a storm is you have to look at your gutter like a drainage system. So instead of it being on the ground, it's actually on the roof. And if your drain isn't working properly, the water's going to back up. Now, when the water backs up, where's it gonna go, all right? Now, quite naturally, it's gonna go under your drip cap, it's gonna go, and that same first foot of your roof is most likely, or even the fascia board, is most likely gonna get most of the damage. That's a lot of water um, to be saturated into your roof, and you don't want that, because that could always back, backlash into the actual ceiling of your building and then start leaks. Besides leaks, there's another reason you need to pay attention to your gutters when a storm is approaching, and it's something a lot of people might not think about until it's too late. If you have a gutter that's damaged, you don't want 30, 40 miles an hour winds to be um, tearing down the gutter because now that becomes a projectile as well as a dangerous object as well. This has been another Zadness Hurricane readiness tip to prepare you for the storm. Physical distancing isn't the same as being socially distant. I know that sometimes it can be a bit difficult not being able to engage in the in-person social activities that we did before, whether that be going to the movies or just hanging out in person. But remember that different does not mean distant. As the generation of technology, we can get creative in planning virtual parties with friends and family. Play online games with friends. Plan virtual family parties, start a cooking competition among cousins, or do a virtual dance party. If you do gather in person, however, remember to avoid gathering in large groups. Always ensure that you wear your mask to cover your mouth and nose. And remember, wash and sanitize your hands often. Now you can watch the ZNS network of channels absolutely free. That's right, ZNS is now broadcasting three separate channels free to air on channel 13. One channel has the regular ZNS TV HD programming. One is the parliamentary channel and one is the 24-7 television community page. These channels may be accessed simply by attaching either a rabbit ears antenna 
or an indoor amplified antenna to the RF input connector on the back of your digital television or flat screen TV. Once the antenna is connected, select TV mode and choose Auto Scan and your TV will automatically pick up channel 13 at no charge. Once you're on channel 13, just use the channel selector to go to each of the three ZNS free channels. Antennas are available on many sites online. Free TV, ZNS brings it back to you. Hey guys, it's that time of year again, the Atlantic hurricane season. Are you ready? Here's another ZNS hurricane readiness tip to help you prepare. Windows are another vulnerable part of the exterior of our homes. Antonio Miller gives us some good advice on how to hurricane proof windows and a surprising way to make sure that you've repaired all the cracks. The part of our window I think we need to check to get ready for a storm is the seams, the seams of a window. And a lot of times you can tell because ants do a really good job finding their way in between those seams. Um, a, a nice easy fix for that is get some caulking, um, some window caulking, go around, beat it all around the window. That's a nice way of sealing it. Also, directional rain. If you get a rain coming at an angle and it's hitting, and a lot of times that happens too, if you can hear the rain hitting on your window pane or your glass, that also means that if you have a seam, the, wind, the water can also get in as well. This has been another ZNS Hurricane readiness tip to prepare you for the storm. I've never seen people in Abago so shocked. It's a bittersweet moment as they pick up the pieces of what's left after Hurricane Dorian devastated their lives three years ago. Well, every time it looked like somebody had dropped a bomb here. Although the memories can never be erased. I couldn't call my family, I call her family. You can still hear the pain in their voices. If I hear bang too hard, it just, you know. Anybody who could get inside, go out inside. And through it all, this community of Abaco remains grateful. My family was. Join ZNS TV 13 for Voices of the Storm on Sunday, September 11th at 8 p.m. as survivors relive their dramatic stories of living through the storm and we learn how the government has focused its attention on listening to their voices and helping these hurricane victims get their lives back. That's Voices of the Storm, right here on TV 13. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer affecting Bahamians. Your risk of developing colon cancer is increased if you have a personal history of colorectal cancer or colon polyps, a family history of colon cancer, or inflammatory bowel diseases such as ulcerative colitis. Other factors that can increase your risk of developing colon cancer are low fiber, high fat diets, a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, smoking, and alcohol. You can take steps to reduce your risk of colon cancer by making specific lifestyle changes. Eat a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. These foods contain fiber, minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants, which may play a role in cancer prevention. Drink alcohol in moderation or not at all. Do not smoke. Exercise with the goal of getting in at least 30 minutes each day. If you've been inactive, start slowly and gradually build up to 30 minutes. Also, talk to your doctor before starting any exercise program. Maintain a healthy weight. If you're at a healthy weight, maintain it by combining a well-balanced diet with daily exercise. If you need to lose weight, ask your doctor about healthy ways to achieve your goal. Colon cancer screening can also help to prevent colon cancer or lead to its early detection when treatment is most effective. If you're 45 years or older, speak to your doctor about having a colonoscopy or some form of colon cancer screening that may be appropriate for you. I'm Dr. Eugene Marcus Cooper. Pay attention to your health. Get the facts and discuss colon cancer with your physician today. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. 
This public service announcement is brought to you by the communications section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training in conjunction with this channel. Hey, you. Yeah, you. I want you to understand something. Your children education is very important. Don't pay no mind to this COVID-19 pandemic. Your children still got to have their education. You hear me? The Ministry of Education still got their virtual school going on, you know. The reason I'm talking to you about this is because more than 8,000 Bahamian children ain't never log on to classes from March 2020. That's a long time for children to be without their education, you know. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. Now, the ministry needs you to ensure that your children log on and stay on. You know, you know, plenty of the children getting their education, you know. They logging on and they staying on. Where your children is? What can happen to them? You need help? Call the school. Call the teacher. They just waiting to help you. So make sure the child register. They log on and stay on. And check on them every show often, man. And make sure they ain't skylarking or sleeping. And one more thing, just make sure you ain't up and down past them children in your morning clothes with your cocktail. You see, they got to log on for attendance and in order to do their school work so that they could graduate with the Bahamas National High School Diploma. Our Bahamas need every child to live up to their potential. And parents, it starts with you. This public service announcement was brought to you by the communications section of the Ministry of Education and Technical and Vocational Training in conjunction with this channel. Hello, Keisha, you something else, boy. Who this is? Tamika? You don't even remember my name? Wow, Dred. Girl, I've been so busy. You still planning your trip? Girl, and I can't wait. I write here online booking my car. You dare planning trip. You vaccinated? Girl, we had to. We ain't been nowhere since this pandemic star. Girl, and we got a 14-day vacation. Best vacation ever. <laughs> Girl, are you bro? Well, I know you's gonna get the vaccine, because you two like travel. When y'all get your vaccine? Girl, long time. Because you got to get your first dose, wait, then get your second dose at least two weeks before you travel. Johnny get his vaccine and he 12. Even Grammy get hers. <laughs> Child and Grammy say she ain't got no money. But I see her hiding under the mattress. Child, let me send my list because I know you're going shopping. In case you don't play with me. Vaccinate today, live tomorrow. A message by Aho WHO, Canada and USAID. Ready, get set, and off we go into the 2022-2023 school year. Students, as you prepare to return to the classrooms for full face-to-face -face instruction beginning August 29th, 2022, here are some tips to assist you in getting ready. Now is the time to re-establish an earlier bedtime so that when school reopens, waking up on time would not be a challenge. Establish an evening routine for example, plan in advance a schedule for completing homework, reading, playtime, and taking a bath. Review all health and safety protocols to ensure you remain safe when you return to school. Make your mark this school year. We play just like your kids. We text just like your kids. We learn. We even cook. We take selfies. We have hobbies. And we love sports. In every way, we are just like everyone else and enjoy the same things and live our lives every day, just like you do. 
So if you happen to meet us, treat us just like everyone else. Because at the end of the day, we're just like you. Living life with Down syndrome is simply living. To learn more about Down syndrome, call 727-2105. This message is brought to you by the Grand Bahama Down Syndrome Society. the Dixon Hill Lighthouse on San Salvador to let you know that marine protected areas make dollars and cents. A well-designed and managed network of protected areas can generate income for nearby communities. From MPA managers to lodges to eco tours, there is money to be made. Healthy marine ecosystems help to protect our islands from climate change and other impacts that we cannot control. Healthy coral reefs help to break down big waves and mangroves absorb storm surge and help to protect our coastline. Older and larger fish tend to carry more and healthier eggs than younger fish. Fish replenishment areas will allow fish to grow bigger and ensure that we have more fish now and in the future. In our replenishment area, fish are free to grow and reproduce. As their populations increase, more fish will spill over into other areas where fishermen can increase their catch and their income. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of marine protected areas on my island. I support the establishment of a marine protected area on my island, and you should too. And you should too. And you should too. And you should too. See the, See the future, future with, with Bahamas Protected. Welcome back to our continuing coverage on the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as we transition to a new monarch, King Charles III. We have come in from Parliament Square, and we are now back in the ZNS radio and television studios here in Nassau. It was very sad, yet forward looking, as we reported on the signing of the Book of Condolences by the leaders of our state, the leaders of our government, parliament, judiciary, and the church, as well as those who have been appointed constitutionally, the signing of the Book of Condolences continues. We thought it would be fitting in these remaining minutes then to invite, I hate to use this word, but I got to, commoners, because in the royal structure, that's what it's called, for our people to call in and express themselves on this day 
We have said it before and we will say it again. This is a day when the entire world is focused on the passing of the queen and the ascension to the throne of the king. One or two things before we open the lines for you to call in and I ain't gonna allow nothing negative now. Um, positively, anything negative I can dispense, <laughs> I can get rid of it now. Some people may have a view of how the royal family operates. The way I understand it is there is intermarrying, if you will, to keep it pure, but that has changed somewhat under the late Queen Elizabeth II, where members of the royal family were able to marry commoners, as is the case with her grandson. Also, during the 70 years that the Queen has sat on the throne, I I'm trying to dispel some negatives now, it, it was a time of peacemaking, not a time of war, although wars would have occurred, her role would have been one of peace. And so as someone said to me this morning, and they were misinformed uh, that she killed a lot of subjects. No, that's not the case. Um, so when you call in, please be guarded. 325-5404. Um, From the islands, toll free. 1-242-300-8255. The other thing has to do with divorce. Um, so some of the traditions of the royal family have changed to now allow Charles to be King Charles III. The other thing I want to point out is this. Camilla becomes Queen Camilla. Look. And full stop. King Charles and Queen Camilla. So, <laughs> you have two monarchs, if you will. The king and the queen. As opposed to when the queen, Elizabeth II, sat on the throne, her husband... Prince Philip did not. Um, and later on, maybe we will get into some of the um, uh, some of the mechanisms, the systems of royalty. Okay, you want to pay tribute. The lines are open. Three two five five four zero four. From the islands, toll free one, especially Elutra, one, two four two, three zero zero eight two five five. I say particularly Elutra because I believe some of the earliest settlers to come to this world, the new world, from the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Ireland, they would have settled in Eleuthera. If you want to send me a message directly to my phone, 357-9417, 357-9417, and directly to me, 
Rosemary Bean. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Miller. Good afternoon. This is indeed a sad day, and I commend you on what you're doing out there. Thank you. And it's just a fantastic um, with all of the Bahamians, all the leaders in this country giving condolences. I just want to reflect for half a second. When I was in school in England, and I was in the middle of doing my midwifery, second part midwifery. What part of England? I did my general in Bristol, and I did my midwifery in London. And in but while I was doing the second part, You are breaking up a bit. Ian Straw, Ian Strange, named Abbott um, Athletics. And whenever they went out, they would take me. So this day we went to this cross-country um, um, function. And would you believe that Princess Anne was riding? And of course, we were there. And who was there but the Queen herself, Queen Elizabeth II. Princess I acknowledge the strangers and myself. Princess Anne is Elizabeth. I say it's just been sister. so wonderful. That was way back in '68. Yeah. Just before I came home in '68. Yeah. And um, um, it was just very sad, and I send out condolences to the whole family. They were all there that day: Prince Philip, Her Majesty the Queen, and of course my daughter. Princess Anne at the time was young, was riding this wonderful, wonderful beast, this horse. Thank you, Mr. Bella. Continue the good work you're doing. And I join the rest of the Bahamas in sending condolences. God bless you, sir. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. I want to thank Josephine Connolly. Borna Smith, who is now the Minister of Tourism, Gaming, Environment, Heritage, Disaster, in the Turks and Caicos Islands. It was through her guidance and benevolence and direction that I was able to go to London. Fascinating city. <laughs> like they stay up all, it's like 24 hour city. And for me, just going by Buckingham Palace, where the Queen and King would sit was just so powerful. Um, I would encourage anyone, anywhere in the world, if you have not visited London, do so if you can. Who's on the lines? 325-5404. From the islands, toll free, 1-242-300. 8255. Lonnie? Good afternoon, Mr. Miller. How are you? You are in Elutra. Yes, sir. Okay. I am happy that I was able to meet her personally during the time the Right Honorable um, pr former Prime Minister Ingram was in, 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 in session. Um, I got an invitation from him to personally <laughs> meet her. So on behalf of the people of Elutra, I'd like to send condolences to the royal family. When, Thank you, sir. When did you meet her? That was in 19... It was somewhere around after 97, 1997. She... In Nassau. She came to Nassau? Yes, she, she came to Nassau, yes. Was it a Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, do you know? No, I don't think she just was on a visit on her ship. Ah, on the royal yacht. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you went aboard the yacht? Yes, sir. And you ate? Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> and, 
I it's hope you have a location. Lonnie, I hope you have photos of that. I don't have one, unfortunately. The the yacht the yacht got photos of it. Okay, okay. And, but I'll have to find a way to get one. And Papa Ingram got <laughs> got well, I'll have to check Papa Ingram out then. Yeah. Yeah. You have a good day. Okay, Lonnie. Okay. All right. Let's go to Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith? Oh, he's not there. Okay, uh, Mrs. Smith, hold on for for a moment. Let's go to Mrs. Smith, yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Miller. Good afternoon, Mr. Miller. How are you? I'm excellent today, thank you. That's very good. I just want to um, give my condolences to the family of the, of the um, Queen because she was such a lady of grace and elegance and... I mean, for all the things that she went through, she still maintained her composure. And, if, you know, in 1966, when she came to the Bahamas, she came to the hospital, and I had just gone into nursing training. And so we had to all, they had us all out there in our crisp uniform. And I still have that picture, and I could still pick me out, even though you can't. I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot of people. But we were right there in the front line. And I thought she was such an elegant lady and so graceful. And, you know, I, don't, I, I think she's done a wonderful job over the years. And I'd just like to say, you know, the, the king, I hope he does the same thing. So congratulations to him in, in, in succeeding his mother. And I just want everybody to know that, you know, we have to pay our respect to people. People of all, um, you know, types of people in this world, all standards, all um, 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 things, but please, some of us we just do not say good things, and I'm glad you said what you said. So continue to do the good work. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Yeah, no. Three two five five four zero four. From the islands, toll free one two four two three zero zero. A two five five. Uh, who is this? It's Deborah. Yes, this is indeed a sad occasion. My mother and I had the privilege of visiting London in 2010. My mom stayed for six months, and I stayed for two weeks. Then I returned the end of December that year and stayed until early January 2011. We visited Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace, Westminster Abbey, and of course, Big Ben. Whenever there was a showing tour of any of the palaces, the queen would stay at another palace, so we were never able to see her. The palaces are all beautiful, with its rustic and gold architectural designs. It's really something to see. While touring, you would wear earphones, and as you walk through, they would give you a history of the entire royal family. May her soul rest in peace and rise in glory. Long live the king. Very well written, Deborah. I love it. Somebody is taking exception to what I am saying. Well, you check. It will be Queen Camilla. But His Majesty, King Charles III, Mr. Miller, I am just fascinated at how you recall information. Neville Moss, just a moment ago, I'm very proud of you, Neville. This is a WhatsApp I'm reading. I like Mr. Moss. Pray. I like Mr. Moss. Pray for your continued success. It's just great to have you back. And you have never met me, Mr. Miller. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, this is someone saying, you look very handsome this morning live. Excellent show, honey. <laughs> Mr. Miller, you are doing a great job. You really look sharp. You make a tack look dull. Who's on the line? 325-5404 from the islands. Toll free, 1-242-300-8255. I am not egotistical. Somebody called me that the other day. I am not. But what I do is study so that I can be approved. <laughs> so I want to be outstanding. I don't want to be the ordinary fella. So I study. So when I called the general manager this morning, he approved. To message me, 447-9879 or 357-9417. Good day, Mr. Miller. How can we book your show? Okay, call ZNS Sales. The number for sales is the number for the ZNS um, um, sales. I think it's three. F I'll tell you in just a moment. You can call me directly as well, which is 447 9879. And I'm going to give you the sales number as well. Five zero two three nine two one. If you'd like to be a sponsor of Daryl Miller Live. We're taking your calls in these last 10 minutes. Three two five five four zero four. From the islands, it's toll free. One, two four two, three zero zero. Eight two five five. Mr. Miller, great show. You all make us so proud. You all so much good information about everything. Now there was a quote. Anyone on the lines? 325-5404. From the islands, toll free. Anyone on the lines? 1-242-300-8255. Again, 325-5404. 1-242-300-8255. Eight two five five. I was suggesting earlier that we might have to change, <coughs> excuse me, some of the verbiage, the words in certain things as a result of the passing of the Queen. For example, I think, and I'm checking this as I go, I think the national anthem of the United Kingdom 
would have to change. But there is provision for that already, I think. The national anthem of the United Kingdom, God save the Queen. I think that'll just change to God save the King. It's, according to what I'm checking here, the national anthem is not written into law. So from a practical point of view, you can easily change the words. I think it says, God save our gracious queen. Now we can say, God save our gracious king. Carl, you're on Daryl Miller Live. Hello. Mr. Miller, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah, I would just like to call to say how I've been in talk with the queen. I, I, would, I would say as a young police officer, I was on the honor, honored guard at Prince George Dock in 66 when she came. And then in Kenyami. Yes. And Six. then in 85 when she was sick of children, I took my wife to the lower gardens where she was walking around and greeting our individuals. And when she was approaching me, I swiftly came to attention, to go get her attention, and she stopped by and she asked me, well, who are you? So I said, Inspector so and so. She said, well, How come you're not working? I said, Your Majesty, I worked this morning just to be off this afternoon so I can see you. And of course, I introduced all of my wife, but my wife could not find a, could not find a voice. But anyhow, she, she shook her head and she walked off, and I was very, very pleased. I is, thought I'd share that with you this morning, sir. Is this Campy? It is, Mr. Miller. Can't be from, from South? So, that's right. Oh, man. <laughs> Let I me say I this. Haven't, I haven't seen you in a while. Let me say this. You always look sharp in your uniform. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. You were one of the sharpest dressed ever. <laughs> well, one of them, yes. Yeah. Well, listen, I hope to see you soon. Okay, Mr. Miller. You, you still in South? No, I am back, I am back in Nassau. Oh, well, let's go to Divine Cafe one day. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you there one lunch, one lunch in afternoon. All right. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, the lines are open for the next couple of minutes. 325-5404. If you're in Nassau, from the islands, toll free, 1-242-300. 8255. Now, again, I gonna have to dispel some negativity here. Um when I say the United Kingdom, I talking about several countries. Scotland being one, England being another, and I won't say this right, a part of Ireland. Not all of Ireland are united. In fact, Ireland always having fighting amongst each other, so to speak. And I really don't want to get um, into that negativity there. 
certain times when people pass, you have to be careful how you remember them. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, this building that we are in was commissioned by Her Majesty in 1977. I believe the general manager at the time was Kelsey Johnson for radio, and the general manager for television was Charles Carter. I stand to be corrected, but this building where we are now was commissioned by Her Majesty in 77. I joined ZNS a year later. Mr. Anderson, you're on. Good morning. Morning. Good afternoon. A good afternoon, yes, sir. Condolences to the family of the Queen. Um, we're going to keep the king strong, and he'll do a good job like his mother did. And I, I want to say, uh, my thing is, I can't remember the year, Donald, but I know when Queen's Park was, was named in first week, the Queen was in Angels along with Selena Bendon. I shake her hand my own self. So she was a good woman. She was great. And I pray that her soul rest in peace and condolence with the family on behalf of the Angels. People in San Angeles, we send our condolences to the Queen family and the Commonwealth Bahamas. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. That's um, Elon Anderson from Bowen Sound. And he said he remembers when Fresh Creek Park was named Queen's Park. That might have been the same year the Queen came to commission this ZNS building in 77. Yeah. Ruth, and then that's it. Hi, Ruth. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Miller. Good afternoon. I was in England in 1975-76. I studied at the Polytechnic of the South Bank and Westminster College, where the Queen's household is trained. I came back home, and I worked at the Bahamas Hotel Training College, and when Her Majesty the Queen visited the Bahamas in 1977, I was the person who baked the cake that was presented to the Queen at her dinner held at Government House. And the photograph of the cake, which was iced by Mr. Norman Weber, a British... Um, Citizen was was published in the Nassau Guardian. Okay. Okay. Good to hear you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, our time is gone. I'm being reminded that um, 45 years ago, October 20th, 77, when the Queen commissioned this building, some of the employees, you weren't here. Yeah, you're a newcomer. Uh, yeah, you, you're a newcomer. Some of the employees who were here at the time, just some, and I know I can get in trouble calling names because it was plenty employees, but some of them were Charles Russell, Andrew Cumberbatch, and Angie Bain. I think Derek Catlin was here as well along with maybe Jeff Hepburn. Anyway, 
I'm going to stop calling names. But we were here for the opening of this building by Her Majesty the Queen, 1977. Our time is gone. I'm going to Divine Cafe for my okra soup and peas and grits. Carl, I'll see you there. God willing, then. Oh, next weekend I'm going to be in the Dilly Tree in Palmetto Point, Lutra. God willing, then, I'll be back on Monday with another lively, provocative, die.